Can I taste your juice? Hey folks, Pete Bissardo. You know, one of the things that I love about putting out these reviews is all of the help that I get from you guys. Um, whether it be as something as simple as, hey Phil, take a paper clip, jam it in your mesh wick and you'll be able to easily wrap the coil around it, or a five-page dissertation as to why I should be using VRMS as opposed to V-Average in the graphs. Okay, so I think we've always known that um, some of these devices fire a lot higher than their setting. And here's the problem. They have settings. They have a screen. The screen has a voltage setting. And you set the voltage and you think that that is the accurate voltage. If these devices had something like this, and hopefully we won't set our PVs to kill, um, stun preferably, just a simple power bar, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Uh, but they don't. They have a display, you have the ability to set a voltage. Um, I understand why they do this, because if, uh, if they didn't do that, uh, this wouldn't be very much like this. So I would do the reviews of PWMs, Pulse Width Modulated Devices, um, and I would take a look at the numbers for you, and I would put the numbers in a chart, uh, and then I would do something like this. I want you to take a real close look at these numbers okay because they're uh, they're very important we're going to talk about these numbers okay take a look at them don't forget them all right now right, let's come back all right remember all those numbers forget about them throw them away um <laughs> this device performs nothing like its numbers and then using the scope uh, i tried to show you that wave uh, and try to explain in my own words uh why uh, the settings on something like this do not feel like the settings on something like this, all right? Uh, for a lot of you, that explanation wasn't good enough, okay? You said, look at the VRMS. All right, so um, I am now looking at the VRMS, okay? What is the VRMS? Uh, I've looked at a lot of different uh, explanations as to what it is. The one that uh, I kind of uh, liked was... The, um, it's a way of accurately quantifying the effective voltage when the voltage waveform is something, something other than a flat DC signal. So it's attempting to turn that waveform into a DC voltage and to do it accurately. And I think after doing a lot of experimenting and doing a lot of tasting and doing a lot of formulas that I would agree that this VRMS value um, is much more related to the vape experience than this V average value. Okay, so let's talk about some of these formulas that I looked at, okay? Uh, a lot of us have seen this one. This was, was presented by uh, Field of Vapor, whose balloon test I thought was genius, okay? But I've talked to some engineers, and they say that this formula here is a little bit more accurate. And then I dig deeper into it, and I find out that there are multiple formulas based on the kind of waveform that you're looking at. And then I dig a little bit deeper into it, and I see this. And after I see this, this happens. So... Um, doing those formulas is not something that I want to get into. This is all supposed to still be fun for me, okay? Uh, so what I did was, um, well, first of all, why can't I use this? It's a scope, right? And it seems to display the VRMS. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, here's that scope. This is uh, a uh, VMAX firing at 3.7 volts. If you look at this V average, it looks like it's underpowered. If you look, like, look at this VRMS, it looks about right. Uh, unfortunately, this VRMS is not an accurate uh, value. It's not the uh, uh, the true VRMS as um, figured out by some of these formulas, okay? So, we cannot use, and my circles are still here, we cannot use this scope, okay? All right, so we can't use this scope to get a, uh, a an accurate read of this VRMS value. Uh, but what we can use is this scope here. Uh, here's my new toy, okay? So uh, I can use this scope to give you a much more accurate um, representation of that VRMS value. So if we look at that scope now, um, this is the same signal, same Cardo, this is just a 3 ohm, same device. Uh, we could see that V average here of 3.227, that's what it looks like anyway, I'm going to change that, that red to, uh, to yellow. And I also have this set to display the VRMS. And here it is showing at 4.89. Uh, so quite the difference. 
Uh, and with this scope too, I can also put out a whole bunch of other information for all of you tech geeks who want to see it. Um, here is that VRMS value right here, and here is that V average value right there. Okay, so uh, I get a little bit more flexibility, uh, a little bit more accuracy with this scope. So now let's take a look at some more numbers. First of all, we'll look at the uh, the Provary. Okay, here's the Provary. Um, do we need to look at VRMS for the Provary? Because if you look at the Provary signal, it looks like this right here, right? It's, it's pretty much flat. It doesn't look like this. But the Provary uses pulse, uh, pulse width modulation. So um, what gives? Well, the Provary does use pulse width modulation, but there is some additional circuitry after that wave to kind of flatten it out. That gives you, um, and it helps them better tune it, it gives you the accurate settings, and it still has the efficiency of pulse width modulation. Okay, um, so when I, I talk about this, I'm not really going to talk too much about what's going on inside. I'm going to be talking about what the output signals look like and looking at that number uh, in the VRMS value as opposed to the V average value now for the charts. Okay, is this boring anybody yet? Okay, so let's look at that Provary again, only now we're going to look at it next to the, uh, the VMAX. And this VMAX, by the way, is the V2 version, okay? The one that uh, resets itself down to 3 volts. Okay, so if we look at the V average for the VMAX, well, it looks like it's underpowered, right? But we know, uh, based on the vape experience, that this number is not telling the truth. Because we know that uh, the VMAX set to any given value appears to be firing a lot higher. How much higher? This much higher. Okay, so now we are looking at the VMAX RMS value. Okay, and you can see here it is hitting substantially hard, higher uh, and harder and hotter and whatever you want to call it um, over the, uh, the Provaris settings. Okay, so I think this does paint a much better picture um, as opposed to looking at the, um, the V average value. And there's all those uh, circles again. So moving forward, uh, we are. I am going to use the VRMS in the charts. I will show you um, the output of the scope. Uh, I will show you those the, that big chart with all of those numbers for all of you tech geeks out there. Um, but I will continue to not only talk about the tech, but also the vape experience. Okay, because these numbers are only one side of the coin, in my humble opinion. Um, what is the other side of the coin? The other side of the coin is, is this the right number to use, the VRMS, or is it the right now number to use? I kind of feel like this is the right now number to use, because I think as we get more into vaping, as we get more into the technology of vaping, uh, as we get more into thermodynamics and temperature regulation and adjusting the voltage over the co course of the draw, that maybe even the VRMS number won't be the right number to look at anymore. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to describe that uh, with a picture on the scope um, and, you know, just kind of do my best to explain this stuff to you um, using my own words, using the pictures, using the numbers. Now, for all of you people who have purchased a pulse width modulated device, for those of you people who have a VMAX or a ZMAX or uh, the numerous other devices out there, um, I'm not trying to tell you that you have a crappy device, okay? Um, I'm just trying to tell you the difference between an accurate device and a maybe not so accurate device, depending on which number you look at. So you continue to use the device that you're using. You continue to be proud of it, and you continue to be a vapor, okay? Because at the end of the day, what I say at the beginning of all my videos, I still uh, hold very dear to my heart. Whatever you are using to keep you off of analog cigarettes is the best device or juice out there, okay? And, and I truly believe that, because really this should be a game about getting off of cigarettes and really not looking at numbers. Um, a really, uh, a person in this community who I have a lot of respect for um, asked me this question. He said, Phil, do you measure and chart and need to know everything there is to know about your toaster? Or do you just enjoy the Pop-Tart that it gives you? Now, I don't like Pop-Tarts, 
but I understand where he's coming from. So let's not forget that I think we all have the best test equipment for electronic cigarettes. What is that test equipment? It's picking it up, it's um, taking a vape off of it, and it's deciding for ourselves if we're happy, if we're satisfied. Is it keeping us off of analog cigarettes? I think that's far more important than the numbers. I'm not going to stop showing them to you, but um, just trying to keep things in perspective a little bit. All right, you guys. Um, VaporCon, I can't wait. We're just a few days away. Uh, I am so looking forward to meeting a lot of you, um, catching up with, uh, with, with people who have become friends, uh, getting all together again, and giving Dimitri a big, giant hug. Okay, so you guys, uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Can I taste your juice?